Top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. Rishi Sunak facing more pressure tonight after it emerged that a new fast-track scheme for 12,000 asylum seekers, including those arriving on illegal small boats via the channel, will be launched to try and clear the massive backlog. According to the Home Office, migrants from Libya, Syria, Afghanistan, uh, Eritrea and Yemen will be granted refugee status after completing a single questionnaire, with the vast majority of cases bypassing the crucial interview process altogether. It's estimated that roughly 95% of the 12,000 claims will be granted based on current rates, allowing them to settle permanently in Britain and even sponsor relatives. To join them, all well, Fleet's relation, Calvin McKenzie joins me now. Calvin, with policies like these, it's no wonder we're seeing so much anger in local communities, is it? No. I, look, so this is the issue. You're a smuggler. You're making quite a lot of money. You're making 50, 100,000 a boat. You just turn round to the migrants and say, don't take our word for it that you can come to the UK and you're going to get automatic asylum granted. Look at this and point to the front page of today's Times where they have leaked um, the details that you've just said. And honestly, I can see the numbers multiplying even this year by a couple. What is to stop everybody from Afghanistan, Eritrea, Libya, Yemen and beyond coming here once they read in there that basically that the reason they, they were granted because they said that 95 percent of them would have been granted anyway. And the reason that they said that they were granting them was that, first of all, we can't afford the hotels. Oh, really? Agree. Finally, they come round to our way of thinking. And secondly, we can do with the workforce uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment where we don't seem to have enough people to do our jobs. Is that really the way forward? Are we going to invite the whole of Africa and the whole of the Middle East to come in? come on down, and the smugglers, being the middleman in all this, will make an absolute fortune. We cannot afford this kind of policy, and nor do I agree with Sunak or the Tories. The Tories, by the way, 22% of the poll, 50% Labour in the latest YouGov poll, a nightmare, right? Nor do I agree with them simply leaking it to the Times in order to, in some strange way, diffuse this. It doesn't diffuse this. It adds to the conspiracy that we have a government, whether it is Tory or Labour, who are actually working against the will of the people. If you said to the will of, said to ordinary people, they said, we're going to allow 12,000 in. By the way, all they have to do is fill in a questionnaire. Now, the questionnaire is in English. None of these, quite a few of these people, the majority, won't be able to speak English. This means two things. Either a lawyer will fill it in or a charity worker will probably fill it in. I don't believe that it will be filled in by a relative that's over here already. So there's a whole load of people whose vested interest is that for this to happen. The only people who is not in their interest is actually, strangely enough, the hotel owners who will actually lose out on some money. But this is, a, to my mind, a serious political mistake. But I am astonished that nobody seems as aggravated as I do about it all. Well, the thing is, uh, no, the public are, Andy Calvin, we're, we're seeing it. We're seeing it. And don't you feel like the disconnect between the Westminster establishment and the MSM and the public on this story is just getting greater by the week? They simply do not get it. They do not understand why we're mad. Well, they don't understand the political ramifications in this respect. What happens to our honestly laughable nhs let's you know what happens surely the volume grows okay what happens to our education system already the, the teachers will be complaining this classrooms are bursting at the seam what happens to our roads what happens to our benefit system what happens to any of this none of that is factored in in the financials which are then shoved to us by a government that says i'll tell you what the answer is and by the way this will be true of labor as well i'll tell you what the answer is disgracefully a Tory government will say we're upping our we're upping our uh, tax rates why because literally we've got too much public sector spending uh, coming at us in part in part because of the migrant issue why doesn't why doesn't Sonic say I am going to I'm going to stop this. We've got 160,000 now. If we had this conversation three years time, GB News, 
your panel all sitting here, what do you think that 160,000 is going to look like? Is it going to look like half a million? Is it going to look like a million? At what point does it become an issue that seems to embolden politicians to say we're not going to put up with it? I know. It's pathetic, but that they're not. It's absolutely pathetic. Look, I just wanted to quickly ask you uh, about this uh, latest Gary Lineker political invention. So we had Shamima Begg and Bard from returning to the UK yesterday. So while... Folk like you and me were actually celebrating the news. Uh, the Beeb's golden boy, Gary Lineker, tweeted she was a child, manipulated and groomed. Uh, this feels very wrong. Yeah, Shouldn't right. So, alone so, see so the British Gary Lineker tear up is, his contract? Is, gets most of his money, about a million and a half. Now he doesn't work for BT Sport, right? He makes a million and a half out of licence fee payers. We have to pay this money whether no matter whether we want to or not okay so how does he have the right because he is famous as a bbc employee okay he may claim he's to be a freelance that by the way is now currently being tested by hmrc which is what there's a battle going on in the background for half a million quid of him so you know it's not sure that he is actually a freelance at all how is it that that half of us will say half of us Right. I reckon the number is probably 70 percent or 80 percent who don't agree with him. Why do we have to suck this up? And yet he gets paid in order to use his platform as a effectively a BBC employee to push it at us. Right. The reality is that Tim David said that he is going to get balance. Right. That I don't blame. I don't I don't blame uh, uh, Lineker uh, for using his platform if that's what he wants to do. But why doesn't he do it? Yep. Not well, Tim, on well, my money. He's he funded has, by us. I couldn't agree more. And he has made Tim Davy look like a weak fool because Tim Davy said he was going to get tough. It didn't matter how big you were. It didn't matter what you did. And he has failed. And he's made Tim Davy look like a fool. But Calvin McKenzie, thank you so much. Calvin will speak when I'm back from my break. But it's time now to reveal tonight's greatest Britain and Union jackass. And my superstar panel are going to return for this, although we can only see Calvin at the moment. We will get them back very shortly. But can we hear Dominique Samuels? Yes, you can. Okay, Dominique Samuels, who is your greatest Britain? There Uh, we go. 